that was a great interview with uh, the minister, uh, you know, giving us some unbelievable stats. The third largest trading partner to the U.S. is Ontario. And talking about the Toyota plant, the best automobile plant in the world today is actually in Ontario. So some just tremendous stats. Hopefully all of you got uh, something out of that interview. I sure did. And uh, hopefully we'll bring back uh, the minister uh, again down the road to see how things have progressed. And uh, we'll uh, we'll ask him to come back. I'm sure he'll he'd love to do so. So uh, we'll, we'll stay tuned for that. Now the part of the show where I talk about the three things that I think individual investors should consider before you make your investment decisions. And you actually have those three things here in front of you. <clears throat> economic data. And what I mean by economic data, I mean CPI or inflation numbers. I think those numbers are going to be really important to focus on out of the U.S. And they're going to be reported, I believe, early next week. Looking for growth. If you are looking for growth in your portfolio, which tech names should you be focusing on? Perhaps which tech names should you maybe take a pass on right now? Perhaps looking for better value down the road. And the third and last one, or last topic that I have for you, should you be contributing to your RSPs or a tax-free savings account? A question I get every year at this time. We are in the midst or right in the heart of RSP season. Deadline for RSPs, February 29th. For those that want to uh, deduct the contribution for 2023 income tax purposes, you have to make that contribution before February 29th. So getting a lot of questions regarding RSPs and TFSAs. So let's go to the first one, economic data or CPI. And uh, <clears throat> we have a, a good chart here. We've shown this chart many times on U.S. Consumer Price Index or U.S. Uh, inflation. And you can see here that if you look at all items pertaining to inflation, the, the headline number, you would see that it is 3.4%. The, uh, the core inflation number, which is what uh, the Federal Reserve looks at more, when you strip out volatile food and energy, it's now, for the first time in a long time, come below 4%. It's actually 3.9%. So headline inflation, 3.4. Core inflation, 3.9. Now, the headline number actually is ticked higher. We were actually lower, or the U.S. was actually lower recently. They were just above 3, 3.1, and now moved to 3.4%. So I think this next number or this next Inflation reading will be very important because we continue to see growth in the United States. GDP looks to be in the 3%, 4% range. We're seeing retail sales come in strong. Recent manufacturing data that was released out of the U.S. also showing gains. Consumer sentiment. Consumers are feeling confident in the economy and where it's going. That is strong. And this whole notion about the next move for the Federal Reserve being an interest rate cut versus an interest rate increase. All that in mind, it's really playing out in the economy. So can we see a resurgence in the economy and still get lower and lower inflation numbers, hopefully getting towards the Fed's target rate and the Bank of Canada's target rate for that matter of 2%. Many people believe that the 2% will be very hard to, to get to. But if you look at a six month number out of the US, you're looking at an inflation rate that is actually close to the 2% target. So over the next couple of quarters, if we can see inflation continue to fall, as is the expectation from the Fed, there's a possibility that we could see uh, the uh, Federal Reserve cut rates down the road. So a CPI number early next week will go a long way to tell us uh, what's going on in the economy. And obviously the stock market will pay close attention to that. The second topic, which is uh, important, uh, I think, for individual investors to consider is this idea of, of if you're looking for growth, we all know technology has been an important part of growth over the past, well, all of last year, pretty much, and even the first five weeks or so this year, which tech names should you be focusing on? And I, I have a couple of charts of some names that I think you could still buy. They have gone up recently, but names that I've been looking at for those investors that obviously can handle the volatility of owning a technology stock, a big cap technology stock, perhaps you want to look at these two names. And, and two of the names I've chosen first, Oracle. Oracle is a name, big cap tech name that many people know. They do many things. But one of the things they, they talk about recently is artificial intelligence and how they've incorporated AI into their business. 
You know, they obviously software, services, hardware, uh, they do a bit of everything. Uh, and Oracle is a name that was doing extremely well, came out with earnings, uh, I believe it was last quarter, that they reported disappointed uh, the street or investors. Uh, they came, uh, uh, their expectations actually beat expectations, but their guidance for future growth was a little bit soft. And we saw the stock trade down, as you can see on this chart. Uh, we had a kind of a double top in, it uh, looks like in, uh, let's call it uh, end of June. And then again, another top, uh, just uh, getting uh, close to September. And then everything kind of fell down towards November. And we've seen some ups and downs since then. But I think Oracle is a name that you could take a look at if you're looking at technology today. Second chart that I have of a name that I still believe goes significantly higher, and we've talked about this stock many times on the show, is Alphabet or Google. And uh, we can pull up a chart of that uh, Alphabet stock. There it is. And you can see that it has gradually been moving to the upside. But again, the best word to describe it is gradually. Whereas you take a look at some of the other tech names, which I'll show you in a moment, and they've been moving significantly higher because of artificial intelligence uh, primarily. And a name like Google obviously will benefit and already has benefited from AI, but they are obviously big in search, big advertising. Um, you know, their YouTube numbers were slightly below what was anticipated. So again, when they released earnings, I guess now a few weeks ago, uh, they reported and their stock actually fell because of the the release of some of their ads or some of their ad revenue, I should say, and some of the uh, numbers regarding YouTube. So a name like Google or Alphabet, I believe, is a name that you can own uh, from a tech perspective. And a couple of names that you may want to avoid, right? Uh, as I said, this topic is about choosing the right tech names going forward for growth. Well, some names that you may take a pass on right now if you already don't own them. First one, NVIDIA. We've talked about NVIDIA all the time on the show. Look how much this stock has gone up in such a short period of time. We're talking just in the past uh, year or so. You can see how it's gone from the bottom left, well above uh, anything we were expecting, uh, top right. Can you be buying NVIDIA today? Well, I think over the long term, NVIDIA continues to move higher. Perhaps a stock split in the mid uh, is, is in their future. But right now, maybe you want to take a bit of a pass. You know, they're starting to trade at higher multiples. Maybe you want to wait for a bit of a, a pullback. And the second name in a similar space or, or, or area of the market is AMD, another chip maker and a company that is, uh, I guess, a rival to NVIDIA in, in so many areas. AMD, we can pull up a chart uh, of that. And you can see AMD going significantly higher again here as well. So a name that I've been purchasing for uh, individual investors, for, for investors uh, that could handle the risk of owning a tech name like uh, AMD and NVIDIA for that matter. But perhaps you want to maybe take a bit of a pause here. These names have really gone a lot higher over the last, uh, let's call it year, year and a half. And in case of NVIDIA, maybe the last couple of years. So maybe those are names you, you, you have as a hold. And you take a look at some of these other big cap tech names if you're looking for growth when you make your investment decisions over the next few weeks. The last topic I wanted to address for this show regarding when you make your investment decisions, where should you make those purchases? Should you make them in an RSP or should you make them in a tax-free savings account? And uh, we have a, an excellent chart uh, to put up and that compares RSPs to TFSAs. One thing I do want to point out that the annual contribution limit for TFSAs is actually $7,000 now. That was increased this year. It was prior to this year, 2023, it was 6,500. Prior to that, 6,000 and then 5,500. So uh, this chart, I guess, has to be updated there. But but other than that, this chart is, is pretty, pretty good. It gives you really the differences uh, between what you can contribute to a TFSA versus what you're allowed to contribute to an RSP. RSP, 18% of previous year's earned income up to a certain maximum value. One of them does not provide a tax deduction, which is your TFSA, whereas an RSP, if you need a tax deduction for income tax purposes, the RSP is where you want to invest. At the same time, when you pull money out of an RSP later on in life, you have to pay income tax on what you pull out. TFSA, you can pull out whatever you want and you don't get taxed. So just highlighting a few uh, uh, differences uh, between the two products or account types. 
Uh, one has, uh, is tax-free, one is tax-deferred, which is your RSP. A lot of people think, uh, you know, when you pull money out of an RSP, it's tax-free, it's not. You will pay income tax at that time, but obviously the idea is when you're retired, making less money, you are will pay less in income tax uh, when you pull the money out. So understanding whether an RSP or, or TFSA is right for your contribution now or this year or going forward, I think is a very important thing for individual investors to consider before you make your investment decisions.